Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be featuring three new products, testing them out. So we have a couple items from the newest Scott Barnes summer collection, and then I'm also, I'm late to the game, I know, but I'm trying out the Pure and Raw Beauty Christie palette. So if you wanna see how I got this look, me just playing around, I know that looks crazy, then just keep watching. <laughs> Okay, definitely looking a little bit crazy right now. We're gonna fix this. So of the three products that I mentioned, uh, if you're specifically looking for a review on that, I will just put timestamps down below in case you're like not interested in something that I'm talking about. But I do wanna start off with the Pure and Raw Christie Beauty palette. I fudge this up every single time, you guys. I know it's Raw Beauty Christie, but for some reason, I swear, as soon as I get on camera, every single time. Raw Christie Beauty. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the facts about this because at this point, everybody and their mama has done a review on this palette. But I know some of you were curious about my thoughts. This little guy was actually gifted to me by one of my friends, Yachty. She is Yachty Beauty here on YouTube and she had an extra one and she was kind enough to send it my way. She does have her own YouTube channel. She's done a full review on this palette as well. So make sure you go check out her channel if you want more info on this palette and thank you so much for sending this my way because honestly I originally wasn't going to purchase this. I love Christy but this palette honestly didn't really catch my eye. I personally was trying to save some money so I decided to pass on this palette and then when I saw the whole predicament of getting this palette I was like huh definitely not getting that now and then at the end I kind of regretted it because there were so many mixed opinions on this palette and the quality so I was having FOMO basically and I wanted to know what I thought of the formula and side note the lashes in her collection gorgeous if she ever restocks on those lashes I would pick up the lashes but I'm so excited to play on camera with this palette so you can see my opinions because based on this eye I definitely do have some thoughts. So let me prep because you need to prep with this palette, especially if you're playing with the colorful side, which is basically the side I played with. I've been doing a lot of neutral looks lately, I feel like. I was like, let me uh, do some color here. So I'm using my Kaleidos Tone Activating Primer and I'm going to put this all over my eyeball. This is nice because it very subtly kind of links out the eye a little bit. It's nice and thin. I just put this in my July favorites. I've been enjoying this primer a lot and then I rarely do this but I'm glad I did for this palette. I'm taking some of my ABH loose setting powder. I probably should have done like my cheaper powders for this but whatever. We're gonna just put a thick layer of it down here and I don't like doing this because I really do feel like it dries my skin out a little bit but better that than dark blue shadow stuck down here. Let's uh get into it. If you have been living under a rock and you haven't seen this palette basically it's a double sided palette. There are nine pans on each side so 18 all together. This was designed by Christy herself. So these are her actual drawings which is amazing and then one side you get a nice neutral side which of course is the side that I I want to play with. It's a side that will definitely be more used by me and then on the other side we have a party and these are crazy colors. And the reason that I wasn't interested in this palette and this is just me being completely honest like I have all of the colors that this side has to offer and this has a rainbow palette if I'm being quite honest it doesn't really interest me. These aren't the kind of colorful colors that I'm into. They're I don't know I'm just not feeling it but I'm excited to play and tell you guys my thoughts on the quality and whatnot. Even though I love Christy, I gotta be honest, like anything having to do with the quality, it's on Pure's part, it's not on Christy's part. I think design-wise, idea-wise, Christy did amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the neutral side and I'm taking my whole heart right here and we will come back to this color. But to start, we're keeping it very simple and we're just popping this shade under the brow bone. Love that she added this cream shade in here because this color is so useful for so many different techniques. So we're going to where we will be staying for a while. Taking a clean brush, this is a Isom W21. We're going into Lumos right here, which is just a pure white color. I think if you have uh, these kind of colors where there's not really a light matte, 
it was amazing that she added a white because you just mix these with the other colors and they will create a lighter version of the other colors that you have. And this is a very nice white. It is very powdery. All of the mattes in here, they are a more powdery formula. So just prepare for that. Hence the extra powder I put down here. And I'm just putting this right in the inner corner. The next shade that I'm going into is Tribute. Now I was a little bit not sure of putting this as the first color on my eye because it can kind of make you look a little punched in the eye. So that is why I added the white to lighten that up. And with this formula, please just pat it down and blend later. These colors really build very well. So I think if you put just a touch of the powder on your brush and tap it off, you can get a lighter wash. But if you're doing a look like this, you can build it up. And now what I'm doing is, this is the Refer 14 brush, by the way. I'm going to work on blending this inside edge into that white to create kind of like a lilac color, like so. And then slowly as the brush loses product, work on kind of blending this edge. We'll come back to blending edges, but do what you can so that it doesn't look crazy. Like I probably could have even blended more on this other side and I'm gonna go back and add just a little bit more white. This white is really nice, you guys. It's doing a really good job. Next shade I'm taking is this one right here, Garden State, and I'm using a Luxie 229 brush, and I'm going to pat this right in the center of the lid. Now, this is not my favorite shade. I think it has a lot of vibrancy, but it blends away pretty quickly and I feel like it can turn a little bit muddy also. I don't know you guys, like my eye is really patchy on this side and I don't know if it's the navy or this blue shade, but it's oxidizing in some areas, which is really, really weird. So between the purple and this teal, I did my best to blend and I felt like I had gotten it to be blended looking. The colors almost started to oxidize or get muddy. It's very, very odd. So that's kind of something that I've noticed that hasn't made the application of this look the easiest. And from reviews I've seen, I don't know if many people have pointed it out, but I've definitely noticed it as they were applying. So this is something that I expected to happen just from what I was seeing on other reviews, which is kind of disappointing. I don't know, maybe it's the purple shade it's not agreeing with because color theory wise, these don't blend together the e easiest. Again, same thing is happening right here that happened right here. It's just darker. It's ugly. I don't know you guys. So again, we're going to come back to that. But now I'm going into Hurtful. Now this shade is gorgeous. It's not quite a blue shade, but I'm going to pat this out here and build. So this is a Refer number one brush. I like this color, but again, I feel like it's oxidizing, which is weird. You're going to have to go back and build the colors up, especially this teal in the center. It kind of disappears. It looks ugly when it disappears. I don't know. I hate to be negative, but some weird things are happening. And it might be subtle. You may not notice it, but I notice it. To blend the edges out up here, I'm taking just a MAC 224 brush and blending it. And here is when you are going to go back into my whole heart that cream shade and you can actually use this to kind of help you buff it out like so and you see all of the fallout that I got from those blue and teal shades that's why you want to put powder down if you're like me and you like to do your face makeup first so for the most part that's looking okay um I don't know I definitely feel like I need to play with these colors more to really make my decision I don't know if I just did a bad mix of colors or user error I just was I'm just not good at this kind of technique or this kind of look, but it's not perfect. It's not a really smooth application. It's not seamless like other palettes that I've used where I can easily create a look like this. So I'm gonna go back into Hurtful and I'm using a Refer 12 and I'm gonna just put this right on the outer corner and build it back up up here as well because it kind of faded and meshed into that teal shade, just like that, just a little bit. And then here we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I'm gonna go into Dandelion, which is the yellow. And we're gonna mix that into Hurtful and this is going to create a green, which is really fun. So we're kind of going to do a rainbow down here, a little bit of yellow. So it'll go blue, green, yellow now, color theory. And I'm going to take some of Am I Orange, which, yes, 
It's an orange shade, and I'm going to lead that from the yellow to the inner corner. It's a little bit weird to have an orange as the inner corner. That's okay. I think it still looks good. I have powder all over my desk from this palette, you guys. Final shade, we're gonna take one of the two shimmery colors. This is Cafe Disco. I wish they added more shimmer colors because I think the shimmers in this palette are beautiful. Uh, but I'm gonna put this right in the inner corner and on top of the white, like so. I'm going to do liner lashes so you guys can kind of see what we're working with. And I'll give you kind of my first impressions on this. So I just threw on some really big, crazy lashes for this look. I figured go big or go home since I already had a rainbow eye. This was my first impressions and I really do feel like I need to go back and actually use the palette more, but I'm gonna get closer so you guys can see. It, actually, this blue, it was clinging to some drier parts up here um, underneath my eyebrow. I don't know, shadows sometimes do that, but not a lot of shadows. So it still is kind of a rare thing and it caught a dry patch over here too, which shadows always blend weird over here, so I forgive that. But this is a bit weird. This blue definitely struggled to blend blend out. Like I said, the problems I'm having, part of it's probably just user error. This is definitely not a look that I create very often, but I've created looks like this before with no issues. Also, I think that if I were like to go in with my typical makeup look, use the colors that I'm used to using, I probably would like this palette and have different things to say, which is why I need to use this more. No, but I think there are definitely are some issues with the formula here that it's just not the best quality. These are very bold colors. They're hard to formulate. So if you're a beginner with color, probably wouldn't lead you towards this palette. But I'm going to continue playing. I will do an updates video with this palette because I feel like I need to. <laughs> All right, so we are going to move into the Scott Barn pieces that I picked up from his new summer collection. So these are all available right now on his website. And he came out with a few things in the summer collection. I only got the items that I was actually kind of interested in. The things that I were the least interested in were, of course, the eyeshadow palettes, hence why I used my Pure palette. So he came out with two little mini palettes, a more colorful one called Tequila Sunrise, and then a more neutral one called Shimmering Sands. So these were $25 and honestly the color stories didn't interest me at all and it looked they looked a little bit cheap to me So I passed on those and what I was most interested in the collection was the Flossy glossy summer sizzle because I haven't tried his lip glosses before and then I decided just given all of the other bronzers I wanted to review the Bondi beach bronzing powders that he came out with so these guys are quite pricey They are $55 dollars and he has two shades so I think there was some sort of mix-up in the factory or wherever they were packing the products because I think you got sent like the opposite color because they actually sent me Sicilian Sun which is a deeper color obviously not the color that I purchased um, and then before it even came to my house I had already gotten an email that they had sent out the correct color which is Bondi Beach so this is the color that I originally ordered and here is the deeper color now just kind of looking at them in the pan, Sicilian Sun is much, much, much warmer. I would feel guilty not mentioning this, but this bronzer is $55, and this is something that really bothers me. Just so you know, you do get 35.7 grams of products as opposed to like Charlotte Tilbury, which is 16 grams of product. So this is well over twice the amount of product that's in the Charlotte Tilbury. The Gucci bronzer has 12 grams. This has three times the amount that you get in this bronzer. Obviously, this is like way more expensive. This is a whole other league, but you do get a lot of product. But still, for $55 in one shot, that's pretty hard to justify. So the reason that I'm saying this is because he does make his products in China and I don't have any problem with products made in China. I'm not saying everything made in China is bad quality. There's a lot of other brands that I love that have really nice products that are made in PRC. Scott Barnes has his prices in the range of luxury makeup items. And typically, obviously, I don't know his factories. I don't know how much a product costs to make with whatever factory he's using. He did say that he uses very nice factories in China. But typically, when you go to have products made in China, it's just less expensive to make products there. And I'm really disappointed that that doesn't really reflect in the price nor the packaging. This bronzer, I mean, you guys even said it on my community tab. This looks like a Maybelline product. Here, just for example, he 
here is a Maybelline bronzer. Obviously, this is gold all the way through, but uh, it also looks like this Milani bronzer. So nothing about this to me really feels luxury for the $55 that I paid for it. It's cheap plastic. It's lightweight. You know, it's not nice material either. So that is something that I wanted to point out, and that alone kind of leads a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth. And I love all of his palettes. I think the quality is great. I'm not saying he doesn't have good quality. I just speculate he's charging us a lot more than he paid to make these products. Yeah. Anyways, I bought them anyways. The product itself, really beautiful. You have the bronzer and then you have this shimmery sun with SB on it. Now, from what I've seen, this is an overspray. And I've got to be honest, you probably want to get this overspray off. I'm going to swatch with the overspray, but I think I'm going to try and rub the overspray off before I put it on my face because I don't want gold glitter all over my face. So I'm going to start off on the outside and I'm trying to avoid the gold, but it's kind of hard to. So here is Bondi beach and here is sicilian sun sicilian sun is much more warm a little bit more red it's probably not quite as deep as i thought it would be considering it's a darker bronzer but the tone is definitely going to work on people with a deeper skin tone than myself and let me get it with the overspray no 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 no. okay so here i've mixed in so actually yeah it's just too golden shimmery this is bondi beach sicilian sun i don't really like that i don't really want that on my face what i am going to do i'm just going to take this morphe r2 brush and I'm gonna test out Bondi Beach. I think I'm just gonna give this one to my mom since she's deeper than me. And I'm gonna run this over the sh yeah, you see that kind of comes like right off. That's all you really have to do. I'm just gonna put some of that glitter on my chest while I'm at it. Okay, so if you just take a big brush, it's pretty easy to get that overspray off. And now I have like a gold sheen on my chest, which is really pretty. All right, so now let's actually test the bronzer. I'm not gonna try this on. I'm gonna let my mom enjoy the uh, overspray here for a little bit because it is gorgeous. So I'm just gonna get in with what I bought. By the way, some more details. Like I said, made in PRC, 37.5 grams of product, which is a lot, I will admit. You do get a lot of product but I still just it's why um 24 month shelf life and not tested on animals so I'm gonna use my bling brush f1 brush and there still is a little bit of gold to it and I'm just gonna put that on oh this honestly I'm not gonna lie is a really nice powder really nice formula really nice color so I'm not going to deny that. So here is how it looks. This is a very flattering color for my skin tone. It's very, very warm. Um, It's a warming bronzer, but it's still not like red or orange on my skin. Honestly, that's really pretty. Uh, and it doesn't have any fallout. You're not picking up too much product like the Gucci. It's easy to do that. This is definitely a little bit more densely packed, but it still applies very smooth. And this brush is like awesome to apply this bronzer. Ooh, you guys. I did just talk all that crap, but like I said, he has good products. This is a really nice bronzer. Let me compare it to the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer that we can see color-wise. Charlotte Tilbury bronzer is definitely a little bit more creamy. My gosh, I just swatched them and then I forgot which was which. Hold on. So here's the comparison to my three newest luxury bronzers. So here is Scott Barnes Bondi Beach and we have Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Bronzer number two. The Charlotte Tilbury is definitely much more neutral whereas this has a little bit more warmth to it and then the Gucci bronzer in number one which is much more cool and pink. So this color is different from the newer bronzers that I've purchased and honestly it's a really beautiful bronzer for summer. So... I don't really love everything about this bronzer, but it's nice. I'm gonna finish my cheeks and then we are going to dive into the flossy, glossy summer sizzle set. Ooh, okay, so it's actually been a few hours. I ate lunch and then I was just like chilling and my new merch samples came in and I feel so silly saying, ooh, I have merch, but like, I designed something really cute. So that will be coming soon. I'm so excited. In love. Okay. Anyways, so this is the item in the collection that I was most definitely the most excited about. This is why I placed the order. This is the Flossy Glossy Summer Sizzle Lip Gloss Trio Set. So this is $63. And I thought this was a decent deal. His lip glosses alone are $26. And since I never tried the formula, I wouldn't even know where to start with what colors to pick up. So I thought this was the perfect set for me. And it comes in 
really pretty packaging, honestly. Much prettier than the bronzer. This is limited edition with limited edition colors. The packaging is in this gorgeous white component with some gold detailing. His regular glosses are all gold, so I like this like kind of Tom Fordy white vibe. It's not like a heavy gloss or glass or anything like Pat McGrath. It's more plastic, but again, this looks much better than the bronzers. We have three shades here. Let me swatch them for you. So just so you can see, these have a brush tip applicator and this first one is crystal which is a sheer iridescent gloss sorry my like swatches are kind of there this is basically sheer and then we have blondie which is a nude shimmer these do have a very slight vanilla scent honestly this is blondie it's the second shade but kind of looks the same um i feel like i just got two glare glasses okay um and then the last one is coral cabana this one has a little bit more color it's a pink gloss these are all very sheer glosses i'm not sure of the nature of his regular line glosses i don't know if they're all sheer or they have pigmentation so if you've tried the regular scott barnes lip glosses can you let me know if they're all this sheer because these are very sheer i mean he did say that these were a sheer gloss set which is fine for this summer um if it's a summer collection but I hope his whole line isn't like this. Just to add some quick definition to my lips, I'm using Pat McGrath Buff. Let's start off with Miss Crystal over here. I mean, it's pretty. We all have room in our collection for a gloss kind of like this. It's a little bit on the stickier side of glosses, which I don't mind because honestly, it means it's gonna last longer and it has a pretty shine. It smells a little bit like cupcakes. So this is nice. It's kind of just like a clear gloss. Nothing special. Okay, we'll do Blondie next, which is that sheer nude. It's not that I don't like it. It's just the exact same as the one that I just put on, which, you know, you don't want two colors that look the exact same in a set of three. Mm. But the formula, it does feel good, but that's kind of disappointing. And then the last one we're gonna try is Coral Cabana. And mine got a little, I don't know if you can see this, but the brush got a little bit mucked up. You see that? The bristles aren't together. We have a hair sticking out. I mean, this is prettier, but again, it is very, very sheer. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, I can't speak too much on the formula. This is just initial obligation. It's on the stickier side, which I don't mind as long as it's not super sticky. Not my favorite formula, but I mean, it looks pretty, so we'll see. I'm gonna finish up, get myself together, and I'll be back to tell you my final thoughts on everything. All right, you guys, so it's time to talk about these products. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not super enthused. So we'll start off with the Pure and Raw Beauty Christie Palette. It has potential, but it says a lot when I don't love it the first try. It doesn't mean that that's the end-all be-all, my final decision, but I'm pretty familiar with so many formulas that I can kind of tell right away, and I'm not crazy about the formula on here. I think it's a really fun palette. I can see it being great for travel, great for so many different occasions, but to be honest, on this side, I just don't even really like it. The colors that are in here they're not my preferences for colors this side is nice but i haven't even used it really and as far as the formula goes there was just weird things happening on my eyelid again that has nothing to do with christy that's on pure's part yeah i just feel like the colors were struggling to blend together weird things were happening like oxidation i don't know maybe it was a one-time thing i do want to continue playing with this and i have to update you guys because right now it's not my favorite palette and I'm not very excited. Okay, and then we'll get into the Scott Barnes collection, which as a whole, I was pretty underwhelmed by. We'll start off with the bronzers. Like I said, kind of disappointed in the price at this. I think $55 is a bit steep, but that being said, I must admit, of all the products that I tried in this video, this is the one product where as soon as I tried it, I really, really liked it, like right away. So I do wish that he would do a bit of a price adjustment because his prices don't make sense to me when they're being manufactured in PRC where let's be honest it's just cheaper to create products there and if he says he's in this amazing lab why go all the way to China? 
I'm not into that side of beauty, but this is the first luxury price brand that I've noticed consistently goes to China for their products and it still have that same price tag. That being said, this is a really pretty bronzer. I love the tone on me. I loved how it spread. It wasn't too much product. It's not too powdery. So the product itself is good. So you have to make the decision if you think it's worth it. I will say $55, it's a lot to pay at once, but I will give it to them that you get a crap ton of product. The value in here really isn't bad, but it's like, why do you need this much product though? I just, anyways, I do like the bronzer, but I wish the packaging could have at least been nicer or something. And then finally, the Flossy Glossy Summer Sizzle. I personally wouldn't recommend it because $63 for three glosses, I thought that was a pretty good deal based on the prices of his individual glosses, but these look like clear glosses on me. The pink adds a little bit of color, but other than that, the first two look the same, and I can't justify purchasing a trio for $63 to get basically two clear lip glosses and one that's slightly pink. Like I kept saying, I don't think the formula itself is bad. I like the consistency. It feels actually quite moisturizing on my lips, and I feel like wear time is going to be really good, but the color selection here, not worth it. I would be interested in trying other glosses that weren't sheer like this. <laughs> this set itself color range wise it's not it yeah you guys that's it those are the three new products that i tried out with you today i hope you enjoyed it and i certainly hope you found it helpful if you aren't subscribed to my channel already i would really appreciate it if you would consider taking the time to do so and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys have a good one